Now what is up my fellow prod cars? Welcome to this video and today we will continue where we left off. So we were just about to configure our uh, session middleware. Let's write a comment here. And I would also like to add two more things. So first of all, uh, there is an option called resave, which we will set to false. So what resave means is if you make a call and you do not update the session, so you don't add anything, you don't write to the session, then um, we will not force or we will not override the session in the store we already have because it was already changed. Now for some stores this is important because you know um, sessions can expire or like a session might expire these kind of things and that's why sometimes you need these options uh, but typically you don't and I would also like to point out one more thing um, if you run behind a proxy uh, for example if you run uh, inside a Kubernetes cluster or basically like behind engine X then um, do the following thing app.set trust proxy one and believe me like this can cause so much headache like when I did this the first time like this was the line that I missed because if you run like behind a proxy then you're just using HTTP but the incoming request is HTTPS you know and you're wondering why you're not getting any cookie back so I just wanted to add this here as a comment uh, so that you don't run into this issue like I did. Cool. So now that we have our session middleware wired up, um, let's just create a login endpoint. Right, because now our session middleware runs before all that other endpoints and we now need some route where we can log in. Okay, so let's just say we make a post request to log in and then we add an error function like so. Uh, I think in the initial example, we had email and password in the request body, right? So let's just destructure this. And now we will check if the uh, credentials are correct. Now I'm not going to show you how to do this because this is highly application dependent, dependent on what database you use. Maybe you have a microservice based system, then this will be a call to some other service. Um, so this is fine. Um, we also don't need to know how that works exactly to implement the session. Let's just say um, we assume right now here that um, the user or that the credentials are correct. Assume that credentials are correct. And by the way, what we are implementing right now is like everyone will be able to log in. <laughs> like in reality, you probably don't want that, right? But we just, we will just do it for our example. Cool, so now that the credentials are correct, we can actually start modifying um, a specific object. And this object is called request.session. And this session object is the one that is going to be automatically propagated into our session store. And all the middleware that we just set up before is going to take care of that in the background. So you don't need to do anything. Like uh, we can just mm, set some values actually. So we can say hmm, maybe the client ID is ABC123, you know. Uh, maybe we can also set whatever we want, right? my number is five okay and then afterwards we're going to say okay you are now logged in and by the way this session middleware will automatically take care of the cookies and attaching the session id to the cookies like this is all the magic that goes on in, in this middleware here okay so now that we have a route like create an unprotected login endpoint right because you should be able to log in at any time it would be quite stupid to prevent people from logging in then your app would be useless 
Okay, and then the next thing we can do is we will check, we will plug in another middleware uh, that will check if the user is authenticated or not. Right? So afterwards, like the routes we're going to specify afterwards, um, all requests that are plugged in after this middleware uh, will only be uh, accessible if the user is logged in. And this is really important because you want to protect your routes. And again, as I said, uh, this would, of course, you would, of course, put this in a different file. But I just want to have this one, two, three structure, you know, that you see what you need to do. So we will say app.use request response next. And in here, we are going to do a couple of things. So first of all, we are going to check if, uh, re if request.session exists. If request.session doesn't exist or it's like faulty or let's say request a session uh, dot client ID is not there then you are not logged in because like the client ID is like probably so essential for your entire application you always need to know um, what client is currently making the request otherwise it's just totally pointless Okay, so if this is not the case, then you are clearly not logged in. So I'm going to create an error. And uh, <laughs> let's give it some error message. You shall not pass. And uh, let's also give it a proper status code. Right. And uh, then we're going to pass this error to the middleware. And otherwise, we're just going to call next. So if the user is logged in, then like you can go through if not it will create an error that's pretty nice okay and afterwards um, plug in all routes that the user can only access is that proper english probably plug in all routes that the user can only access if logged in yeah i think you get the point right so let's just add like some thing like let's just say we allow a get request and uh, no request response and we are just going to return request a session now normally you would of course not do that but it's just interesting to see and one thing that we haven't done here is to add five here and um, by the way, like one more thing. So even though I already mentioned it before, right? Even though you're logged in, you might not be allowed to perform this particular action. So for that, you would need additional middleware in this particular route. So this is like yet another thing. So we're not going to, to cover this here, but basically what you would need to do is instead of having this, you would uh, plug in like here, another middleware Press respond next and right and in here you would do some checks like for example check if check if user has sufficient privileges right and in here you would at some point then call next and everything would be fine and of course this middleware here as well would go into another file as well but I'm not going to show this because this is just like a standard express uh, thing so I would assume that you already know how to do that um, one thing we haven't done is we don't run our server so let's just say app.listen we're listening we're listening on port 8080 and uh, let's just console log something uh, let's uh, log uh, server is running on port 8080 okay so now, theoretically, if we haven't done anything wrong, uh, we can say npm run dev, and it should, yeah, it shouldn't yell at us. Okay, that looks fairly okay. So we still don't know if we did everything in the correct way. That's why we will just uh, start Postman. So Postman is a pretty uh, fancy tool 
uh, it allows us to um, make requests like all of the different kinds of requests and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to call this login endpoint with just something like username and password okay let's call it bam and you see okay we get status 200 first of all um, it says you are now logged in okay that's pretty nice and if you go to this cookies tab you see that you get a cookie back right connect.sid this is connect.session id probably and you see when it expires like in half an hour roughly so this is exactly what we want it's http only so no javascript can read it but it's not secure since we are currently running on localhost but remember it must be secure like do not turn this setting to false if you run in production. Like, let me, tell you the, let me tell you this, like it's really important. Like don't run this in production if secure is not set to true, okay? Um, because otherwise this is really, really dangerous. Okay, and now that we are logged in, like Postman will automatically attach like the cookie uh, to our request. So if, if we perform a request, then you see we get some data back this is the session we currently have and uh, i previously did that so that might look a little bit weird so let's first delete the cookie here and let's make a request and bam you see that we get some sort of error um, now of course you should not return like this um, this kind of error here uh, because you know this might give you information on like what kind of technology you run so it just opens up another attack window um, but the main point here is to see that you get 401 unauthorized and this is actually i would say pretty good yeah so it shouldn't print the stack trace but in general like in a uh, in a production ready application you would have a generic error handler as well that would just you know return some meaningful error message but not expose any data here but for testing purposes i would say this is fine but again prod coder is telling you right do not run something like this in prod this is just to teach you how sessions work okay and now again if we log in we get a cookie and if we make the request bam then we get the respective data so that's pretty much it that was actually not too complicated right so if you if we take a look 62 lines uh, maybe like 50 in total or even less if we uh, like subtract the comments that's actually pretty decent so we just built an entire authentication system in just 50 lines of code roughly this is pretty pretty good i would say yeah cool so uh, please let me know what you think about this in the comments um, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Production Coder. Um, thank you very much for watching and please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.